Welcome to the first ever walkthrough where your host, myself, Byron Lazine, and the broke agent host a cast of characters each and every week. The two characters this week are Danny Deals, Dan O'Neill. You know him from Between Two Lockboxes. He is a marketing genius. And we also have Tom Tool from just outside Philadelphia. <laughs> from the 5 a.m. call, number one team in Philly. You know who Tom Tool is. And every single week we will rotate our guests and talk about the week's top trending topics in real estate. So we've got a lineup for you this week. And before I get into that, make sure that you are using KCM and all of their great resources. This is where you want to be if you are in real estate. Real estate content for real results. Try the link for free down below. All right, let's get into the lineup for the walkthrough. We're starting off with the Zillow president, Susan Damler, who and her comments at Inman Connect Pronounced New York, Daimler. which Dan, you, you were just at Inman. Yes. You were there. Matt Leonetti, a BAM personality and uh, star of Overask. Is he the star of Overask? He, he was on the star? last episode. Yeah. I the think he's I he, think he's he the star. Up. He was, people forget he was the first host, the sole proprietor of Overask until I got jealous of all the attendees getting him had to hop on also. But <laughs> yeah. crushed in and connect. It looked like a stand up comedy show. I was watching the live feed from the Inman Connect Instagram and whoever was holding that phone was hysterically laughing to the point it was actually annoying. But it looked like he was literally like Sebastian Manic Scousco or whatever his name is, Dan. I don't know. You always go to his shows. He's some Italian comedian you guys are obsessed with. So Leonetti, uh, BAM personality, opens up Inman. And then later in the day on day one, Susan Damler, Zillow president, has her comments. Three big takeaways from this. We'll go around and get everybody's thoughts. Number one, agents are essential. I first guessed this back in November. Tom Tool was right there on my side first guessing this, that they're going to go deep into the agent relationship after the failure of the eye buying uh, or the shift from the eye buying. Number two, dual agency, big no. I'm assuming she's meaning the same agent on both sides of the deal because dual agency, when you're talking about brokerage, saying no to that might be almost impossible with the size of some of the big brokerages. And then number three, the super app. Uh, let's go around. Let's just talk about the essential and the dual agency. Danny deals. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think the, the dual agency thing is pretty interesting. In the article, she said that dual agency is not the future uh, in the business. And I kind of tend to agree. You know, obviously, the market's been pretty crazy. We've all been in this insane seller's market the last few years. So we are seeing more buyers reach out to the listing agent themselves to try and get themselves a deal. But we know that that's oftentimes not the case, or actually every time that's not the case. The listing agent has the fiduciary duty to the seller. So that listing agent can't represent you and have your best interest at heart and also have the seller's best interest, right? Because the seller wants the most amount of money and the buyer wants the best deal possible. So I agree with the dual agency thing. And I think it's on us as agents to educate our buyers and make sure that they know that we are here for them to act on their behalf. We're here to make sure that they get the house for the least amount of money as possible. We're here to make sure that they have a smooth and easy deal. And we're here to facilitate that for them. And we don't get paid unless we find them and close a deal with them. So I agree with that on the dual agency side of things. Dan, you guys are doing well Double over and Dan right with there, your team. Byron. Double and Dan. Double and Dan. Sorry, Danny on. Deals. Danny Naples, as I like to call him, because I like Dan O'Neill when he's in Naples the best. But Dan, uh, you guys are going to do well over 100 million. Number one team on Long Island. Mm -hmm. How often are, are you guys doing, you know, same agent on both ends of the deal? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really happen too often, honestly. Uh, right now, my business is, is listing heavy, so I'm not really working with any buyers. But of course, having 25 agents on the team, they are going to have people that are interested and they are going to have buyers. But it's not something that we, we strive for. Jesus Christ, that noise is going right but, through me. So Dan just spoke at an event, and they're, they're trying to kick him out of this corner that he is huddled in. And he is just not – he's not having it. He is no. here for the walkthrough. Bam, launch week. 
Dan says, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Tom, what are your thoughts on Susan's comments on agents being essential and the dual agency? So I'm sure Zillow wants agents to be essential so they can collect their flex referral fee from them. And I, that's how they're making money because iBind didn't go well. And and Tom, let's let's both be transparent here. I don't Dan, I am a I'm flex not, partner. I'm a I am flex a flex partner. partner. Tom's a flex partner. Dan's a flex partner. I love my partnership, right? So I, I want to come dis- out. And, I'm with you. I want to come out and say that because topic number two uh, is going to be a very interesting topic. But definitely love my partnership. Want to be transparent with the listeners. You have three flex partners. And then Eric, a partner in BAM. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so exactly. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure they realize it's essential after their foray into iBuying and it didn't go well. That was their pivot business model and they had to go back to what worked. So of course they find agents essential because that's how they're getting their stock price to go up. That's how they're catering to investors. So I agree they feel that way. And I think they kind of underestimated the best agents that are out there, especially their CEO, because they thought, hey, we can replace people. We'll get account managers, we're going to have ZO, all that stuff is gone because they underestimated the need for someone on the local level. So their actions show how essential real estate agents are, at least to their business model. And obviously I've been doing this 21 years, so I feel like they're essential too, even though the governor of Pennsylvania told me I was not essential in 2020, but that's a whole nother story. So thank you, Tom Wolf. Uh, the other part about dual agency. So I don't know if it, dual agency, it, it, it gets sticky. Dan's absolutely right. You get people that come in and They say, well, who are you representing? And I could do everything right in a dual agency situation and still be accused, not that anything would happen, but still be accused of, hey, you're not, don't have my interest fully number one priority. I think the bigger question here isn't dual agency. I would say agency itself on the buyer side, because there's that NAR DOJ lawsuit. Gary Keller is now being singled out. I, I, I think there's a big question of our buyer agent's going to be around. I mean, there's not going to be, there's going to be one agent. Maybe it's your, you hire a listing agent. They handle everything for you. Maybe the buyer's unrepresented. I mean, that's a real outcome here, unless the buyer wants to pay their own fee for their agent and have them represent them in the transaction. So dual agency is a problem. I think buyer agency is also a little bit of an issue and for a very different reason. And that's, I mean, that was on Inman the other day. So one, uh, one agent could certainly cause more issues than the issue we're talking about. Generally speaking, what, Susan's talking about the president of Zillow is talking about here dual agency where the the one agent is on both sides of the yes, transaction. Yes. I tend to agree with her uh, and a lot of agents don't like it when I say this. I've said this historically. I tend to agree that one agent working both sides, you got to be a really special person to pull that off and and be the fiduciary, be transparent, be, you know, f- a full mediator in the middle and do it well. It's not easy. And so I tend to agree with her there. She also brought up the super app. That was my third big takeaway. And that kind of rolls into, or we'll have it roll into uh, our second topic here on the walkthrough, which is day one of the BAM launch, making noise with broke agent media. BAM was texted by Zillow. Okay. So I got a text from a very prominent figure at Zillow. I appreciate the text. Thank you for the text and a phone call followed after that. And it was in reference to this uh, piece that I wrote. And uh, and listen, I have been accused over the years with my 99 plus other pieces on Zillow, whether they be long form videos, short form videos, or blogs in the past, of course, not on a great site like Broke Agent Media, but other blogs in other places of being a Zillow apologist, of being a total kiss ass of Zillow. Um, I never do that again, please. (laughs) Never make that noise in a (laughs) man ever again. That was horrifying. Bobby, you should have helped me out with a a sound effect there. Yeah, get that cut out of the the edit here, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Embarrass myself with Eric. I knew Eric was gonna make a comment there. All right, so a clickbaity title, I'll, I'll agree. Zillow's dirty and obvious plan. It's obvious to me what My prediction is throughout the article, if you're interested in reading it, Zillow overwhelmingly has no issue with the article. Let me just be clear on that. They have absolutely no issue there. Um, There's a whole bunch of data coming from their, you can scroll through it really quick, Bobby, and then drop it off. You can go see it, read about it if you'd like. It'll be linked up in this blog as well. 
Uh, a lot of the data in there is coming directly from their earnings report. So this is straight from Zillow. I consider them the Google of real estate. Uh, I'm not sure what bigger of a, a compliment anybody could give. Google is obviously the most powerful company in the world. And so them being the Google of real estate makes them the most powerful company of real estate in my mind. My prediction at the end of this was that Zillow uh, will become a buyer of independent brokerages over the short term, near term. Let's call that one to five years out. I believe Zillow will still do this. And, uh, you know, here's why I believe they'll do that. They're talking about this super app. Susan brought it up at Inman. We heard about it. Tom, you and I talked about it a bunch with their earnings call. The super yes. app, the super mm -hmm. app. Tomorrow's pod with Spencer Raskoff here on BAM. Uh, we talk about the, the super app. Obviously, Spencer has no affiliation with Zillow. He's just a shareholder now. He doesn't know exactly what that means. But what Susan articulated that it means at Inman was bringing everything into one place. Okay, financing. Um, maybe that's maybe insurance in the future. But tours, everything you do into one place. And here's where I think ultimately Zillow will make the decision at some point to potentially buy brokerages is that if you're going to get the home loans and you're going to get the, the ancillary product, it's a whole heck of a lot easier to do that if everybody's on the same team. When you're working with flex partners that have mortgage that they send to, getting them onto the Zillow side through this super app experience is going to be very difficult. Now there's RESPA laws. So if you buy the team and they're an employee, it's easier to get around that. And, and that's where I think they'll come to. Now, what the phone call with Zillow, they're saying, guys, that um, this is not the plan. Zillow is saying this is not the plan. Spencer, you'll find on tomorrow's podcast, his answer to this, he would disagree with me. I think most people would disagree with me. What I will say is Zillow's plan has always changed and evolved. I'm a backer of those plans because typically they will change and evolve better for the consumer, right? So they may, I may look like an idiot in five years on this prediction because they've got a pretty good margin on these flex teams right now, 35%. So why go into the brokerage business? The argument would be and cut that margin down to 15%. My argument here is they'll go into that business to increase the profitability, which we all know is on the mortgage and these ancillary products, which, which they want to get into. Tom, your thoughts. So what I know is that I followed this closely because, look, I'm a partner with Zillow, right? I think everyone needs to kind of understand that. So I got to do what's best for our business. And I've heard from some reliable sources that Zillow, they don't want to care about the other 65%. They want the whole thing. So they want to take all that profit in. I also know that if you listen to Rich Barton's podcast on uh, with Guy Raz, How I Made It, I don't know if you guys ever listened to this. I have. So he talked about what he, his travel agent experience, and he found that Expedia, and that basically put travel agents out of business. Whether or not it's valid, he's had some bad experiences with real estate agent. I mean, who hasn't? I, I have them all the time because I'm in the business, yeah. right? 87% <laughs> failure rate. We know the issues, right? He doesn't have a very high opinion of realtors in general. Maybe that's changing with how their business is pivoted. So- you know, he sees the holes in the industry the same way that people like I do, because I know we can deliver better service than the 87 percent that are going to be out of the business in five years. So knowing that's the case, I'm clear they do have a plan to come in uh, and, and they're, you know, they, they change their plans all the time. I mean, they, I've been to Zillow's that, offices and they've said one thing we're good at is change. Look at how and many that was iterations. my point on the phone call. Mm -hmm. that, that was so, my point. So, so knowing that's the case, I mean, I would say that's the plan now, but who the heck knows what happens here? And they're going to have some issues with these ancillary services. We've had a, a, a deal we have right now that's with Zillow Home Loans. So I'm in the greater Philadelphia area. You know where the appraiser came from, from Zillow Home Loans? Buffalo, New York is where the appraiser was. That was a long drive. Not, Holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're going to get the some mafia. hot wings and, yeah, and the jump Buffalo through a mafia. table, right? Yeah, I mean, so... That's going to be the one Bills of their challenges mafia. here. Bills Mafia, yes. Byron, I, you know, he's, well, yeah. I, I don't root for the Bills. He watches UConn women's basketball, but that's another Love story. UConn so. women's basketball. <laughs> Shout out to Paige Buckets. She fell short this year. So, but he, hear me out here for a second, because you look at this, right? Like, so they're, they're going to have the same issues that these other big box companies have. And if they don't solve that on the local level, 
it doesn't matter if everything's in-house because no one's going to use those companies anyway. They're going to become a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America where the loans are a disaster. So I do agree that's the plan right now, but they've changed so many times that they could change that in six months and we won't know anything about it because you can never get a straight answer out of your account rep or anyone else that we're dealing with, even though we're their number one flex partner in the greater Philadelphia area. I mean, we've seen the numbers, we've done the most deals. I still can't get a straight answer. So that's, that's the frustrating part about working with them is that I'm all about transparency and we just don't get that. And that's what happens when you work with a publicly traded company. They've got different priorities. I think we'll get some Zillow execs on the walkthrough in the future. I think that will happen. Uh, certainly keep the texts coming, Zillow. Dan, any final thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting too because they did purchase Showing Time what about a year ago, and you know they right now do control and they do have all of our clients' information, right? So they have everything through Showing Time. But they, they had it before. They had it before because clients, loop, yep. use, clients overwhelmingly use the Zillow app, so they had everybody's information. Right, but so now they have all these flex partners, and in my opinion, that's their way of you know testing this right and testing testing their lead program. So now they have these agents and the best in every area that are converting and giving them money back. I think it's got to be their plan, at least for right now. And I think it's definitely something that us as agents should be aware of and should be educated on for sure. And and you're referring to their plan sticking with flex partners or? No, I, I believe that they're going to uh, try to purchase some independent brokerages. I think that that's definitely yeah. one to three. I mean, and, and certainly to their point right now, what they're saying is they're not doing that right now. They're testing out flex only in Raleigh. And yes. I believe Denver is Denver the other. Yep. Uh, yeah. So Raleigh and Denver uh, that just rolled out recently. And so that was kind of with this, uh, you know, news that they were talking about. All right, moving on. Keep the text coming, Zillow. We appreciate them. Uh, let's go to mortgage rate insanity. Okay, let's put up the KCM chart. If you like these charts, if you want to use information like this, go check out the link below. You can get these, try these out for free. You can see from December of last year to where we sit right now, mortgage rates have just skyrocketed up. You probably already know this. And they're even higher than this right now, right? So they just go up every single day. They're up over 5%. Uh, th this is causing a lot of people to worry where they're going to go. New York Fed just did a survey. Uh, their survey for 2022, Survey of Consumer Expectations. They've been doing this since 2014. On average, households perceive that mortgage rates were unchanged relative to pre-pandemic levels at 5.9%, but they expect them to rise in the future. Households now expect, so this is a speculation from your clients, right? Households now expect rates to rise sharply in the coming years to 6.7 a year from now. And here's the big one I want everybody's take on, 8.2% in three years time. So Dan, everybody that you and your great agents are working with, they're going out working with homeowners that believe rates are going to go up to 8.2% in three years time. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I tell every seller right now, if they're not selling or if they're thinking about it, then they must like gambling because, you know, with all these predictions and with the rates going up, we're already starting to see, you know, less showings on houses, less offers. And yes, the values are still there, but we're already seeing that slowdown. So, I mean, Eric is a prime example of somebody who's going to be buying a house soon. And I mean, Eric, how is this affecting you and your thoughts? And, I mean, you kind of have to do it sooner than later, right? And get off the fence. Yeah, I mean, I'm planning a wedding. We just launched BAM. This chart is not ideal for someone purchasing a home. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's scary. I don't even know where I'm going to live yet. So And and for the, the educated agents and the agents who are doing the right thing, they should be reaching out to all of their buyers and saying, hey, listen, if you've been on the fence for the last few years or if you've been missing out on houses left and right, it doesn't matter. Now is the best time because you don't know where these are going to be. And well, I mean, one of the 8% in two years, that's insane. Well, before we go to Tom, one of the big things KCM is helping agents right now uh, understand is that when rates do this, what happened to uh, home prices initially? They actually go up. If they can, if rates continue to go up, then then you will probably see home values go down. But initially, they go up. So if you are a home seller, right, that might be information that you want. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, man, Dan is a man of his words because he likes gambling and he sold out. So, so he's, uh, he actually, he, 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 he was really good about that. that. This in mind, so Eric and I saw David Childers talk on stage at Boomtown United, I guess it was two weeks ago, right? And David Childers from KCM, along with Pure Allen, they said, this will either get people off the fence and it's going to be one of two ways. They either get off and they buy something or they get off, they don't do anything at all. And with rates continuing to go up, I mean, I think this is the Fed's only lever they have 
to fix this inventory issue that's there. And if you look at what's happened with inventory last month, there was like 10,000 more homes that came, I think it was 10,000 exactly, more homes that hit the market in terms of an inventory level in March than there was in February. And I liken that first like blip up to when we were shut down in Pennsylvania and we were watching the showing time graph. Remember that when everyone was looking at like the, 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 the showing activity and how it was plummeting. And that first click up showed me that the market was going the other way. And a lot of agents aren't even like thinking about this right now. They're still trying to tell their clients the only way to do things is bid $100,000 above the asking price instead of finding the people that are going to be really motivated. This could be a market just like we saw when things went the other way in 2008. Not that it, it's mortgage rates going up, not prices going down. So if you're thinking about selling the next four or five years, I mean, you've really got to consider, do I want to risk the affordability of buyers because the reason the market was so red hot in 2021 is because we saw rates in the twos and threes and we had millennial home buyer demand and we had post pandemic hesitancy that didn't transact in 2020. That's all kind of, it's starting to work its way out and we're feeling a little bit of a shift in the market in the day to day. And the people that aren't acknowledging that, whether it's consumers or realtors, they've got their head in the ground and they need to start listening because we've had buyers. They're like, man, I, I missed the boat. I should have bought yeah. last year when you told me to. And now they're even more motivated. At least they learned their lesson. There's some people that won't. And those are the people that lose in the market every time when they're the last ones to adopt. Yeah. And, and David does a great job. David Childers will be on future walkthroughs. He does a great job of breaking this all down. One of the, uh, th there's a uh, re real estate headlines are trolling you blog that we just put up on BAM. And there's a whole bunch of KCM charts in there. One of the most fascinating charts is the one where it shows the last 14 years, the level of, of uh, home building, single family home building that we've been doing. And that's a telling sign that inventory is an issue. If people to Tom's point don't do anything, inventory could become more of an issue. Uh, to check out some more of those charts, hit the link down in the description so you can try KCM, Keeping Current Mar Matters material for free. All right, we've got, um, Eric's favorite topic of the week. This one oh, you're was bringing trending. Me in finally, huh? I almost this one fell was asleep there. This was a betting. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. This we're going to talk viral. about Miguel Cabrera hitting three thousand. <laughs> Who was the uh, 1998 third baseman for the New York Yankees? Scott Brocious, MVP. He is a world of facts. The captain of clicks, Eric Simon, the broke agent, and he selected this one because it had a viral explosion all over the place. Welcome. Yes. To Pound Town, Eric, the tell us about viral it. story yes. every real estate agent is talking about. This has been on Fox News, CNBC, every single real estate publication and mainstream publication has picked this story up. And frankly, I don't find it that inter interesting. It's literally just a sign in someone's bedroom that says, Welcome to Pound Town. I think what was cool about this, though, is the listing went viral because it was very subtly taken. So it still showed like a beautiful decor in the uh, bedroom here. And it actually like showed the house in a, in a cool way where it wasn't really like a gimmicky thing that the agent was doing. Sometimes you have these agents that dress up like, you know, SpongeBob or Barney, or they wear like Pikachu costumes or Sasquatch costumes. Or nothing. Well, this great. is not that. This still at least like showed the house. Um, you know, welcome to Pound Town. Everybody knows what that means. You know, we used to say that in the fraternity back at Lambda Chi Alpha, oh, yeah. USC. 2009, 2012. That's I didn't go to college, so I had no idea until you explained it to me. Eric. Right, yeah. So I mean, everyone knows what it means. But yeah, the story went viral. And the cool thing about this too is the seller actually flips houses. And this this house was also listed for $420,000, which is also funny. But she is capitalizing on this viral moment because she's actually selling these signs. So she has an entire Facebook group, which you can see in that article, in a store where she's selling kind of subtle, funny, sarcastic, sexy signs that people could use in their house. Well, what would you typically see on a sign like that? What's the phrase? Like live, live. laugh, love, or yeah. welcome Gather. home, or sometimes you have signs that literally just say what room you're in, which is one of the most moronic things I've ever seen. Like you'll literally just have a sign that says kitchen as if you don't know what room you're in. So D I like the Dan, spin on it, but I, I think the story, it's a little overblown. Like I don't, it's not that Dan has, crazy. Has, edgy content would you go with this one would you would you unstage that or would you roll with it i mean i would roll with it you know i think that it's a you know a good message of don't take yourself too seriously right the woman that's selling it is you know 
just doing it for sale by owner, which I thought was very interesting. And she, I love the fact that she made that and surprised her husband, who was her partner on these flips. She surprised her husband with them, right? So she wasn't like advertising this. It just, it got picked up and went viral. And now I guarantee that house is selling for probably $100,000 over, $100,000 over ask. I guarantee with all these media outlets picking it up, the activity has been through the roof. And I just think it's hilarious. How do you, how can you say the word pound town or welcome to pound town and not laugh or smile? I mean, that's, that's, I, don't know. I mean, our, our topics yeah, here on the, on the first BAM, Zillow text BAM and welcome to pound town. I mean, we are really going after the, uh, the visual here. Also the account that made this go viral, Zillow gone wild, AKA yeah, my shout arch out. nemesis, shout out Samir. We had him on the podcast. He has built an incredible social media empire. I have bad real estate picks said hovering around 89.2 thousand last time I checked, which was four minutes ago. Zillow gone wild has got to be at like 1.7 million or something like this. This guy just yeah. explodes accounts. He started kale salad, one of the original meme accounts. Tom, you look confused over there. Is this too complicated? Zillow gone wild is, is, a, is a fantastic name. Tom, what did you just get? Did uh, Zillow just text you? Yeah. Did Joel and B just snap no, his Achilles? No, that, that would have been upset. Um, there's Pound Town store in L London, England. So this is not. I was looking up to see if Pound Town actually existed because there's cities like Intercourse and these other places. I mean, I could see a Pound Town. <laughs> yeah, Intercourse, Pennsylvania is a real city. Look it up. Tom's next. Tom's next vacation. Well, I am. I am not Pound going Town. to Intercourse, Pennsylvania. No, thank you. I will not be attending that town. All right. And yeah, we know you won't. But we know let's, you. Let's, <laughs> still that puppy, damn it. Let's finish off I'll with loop right there. The Instagram video cheat code everybody should know about until Instagram bans ban from this the platform. This is going to blow your mind, everyone. This is a tip that I've seen meme accounts doing for the last three months. Tom, pay attention. I see you looking around here. This is yeah, going to blow. Tom puzzled. Tom, you look puzzled. This. this is going to blow up your Instagram, okay? Possibly. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm in. Look at this. If a buyer says they are looking for a deal, you should probably just block their number. Genius text right there by me. So what I did is I recorded it on my screen, a screen record for one second so that this thing would loop nonstop. So Instagram is favoring video over text right now, over still image images, over static images. So what I did, and this is not my original idea, unfortunately. And you, you screen recorded before uploading to, to Instagram, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There's no other way to do it. I mean, that was an Instagram screenshot. I just think if you're, you're watching, right. I wanted you to. So it showed views, which was 166,000. Look at these numbers right here. The average percentage watched 502%. That means people watched this video five times. So if you're thinking of uploading a image or a picture or a you know screenshot of a tweet or something like that, screen record it on your phone for one or two seconds and then upload it and see how it does. I bet you'll get two or three times the engagement, but make sure you don't do it as a reel because the reels only play twice. The videos keep looping. So this is an Instagram hack that I don't know if Instagram is going to let it keep going on because it's kind of, kind of scammy. You know, it's like you're showing people what they think is an image, but they're actually watching a video. So that's why I didn't do it for a few months. Well, well I don't know that it's a scam because it, it is within, it's, it's within, it's not a scam. It's within their, uh, you know, app Loophole. to be able to go and do this. It's just like, oh man, I found a, you know, a glitch in the system. What would be a scam is buying like, I don't know, 200,000 followers in a 60 day period, you know, like December and January of, I don't know, 2019, 2020, that would be hmm. what I would call a, yeah. uh, a scam. And Correct. not that, not that anybody does that, but you, you know, some people might consider doing Look, it. this is a loophole. I would not recommend doing this every post because then people I think will kind of catch on and get a little bit annoyed. Maybe mix it in if you're doing a lot of still images once a week. Tom, you going to try this at home? I'm going to try some today. Yeah. I mean, why not? I'm going to okay. do it once a week. I did it. Eric told me about it. Tom's and, very excited about this tip. And it's my best Woo! performing video because videos are a different category, like Eric said, than reels. And you know, I, I reached uh, like 5x the engagement I do on other videos. So it's a brilliant move to take the tweet over and, and run it as a video. Dan doesn't have to worry about that because he gets 100K per video. He I mean, so do I. So do I, for the record. Goat content every single video. Yeah, only when he collabs with me. Yeah. I... Just kidding. No, his videos are right. crash. Dan, you're not going to stiff me on golf this weekend, are you? No, somehow I made it through the entire podcast. So I'm going to stiff you on golf. I'll see you Saturday bright and early. You didn't get thrown out. Was that a lie pre-show that you no, were get thrown out of there? 
David's right here. It sounded we're like they were busting the tables. Yeah, they they are. There at one point. We're busting the tables. I'm on mute. Where did you talk, and do you got any big names coming up on Between Two Lockboxes? Taya stole the show. Taya was, was going to be on. In all transparency, Taya DiCarlo was going to be on here at the first ep ever episode of The Walkthrough. Was I, I screwed her over with a time change, and uh, and Tom was going to be on week two. Tom's on this week. Taya will be on next week. So make sure you definitely subscribe to Broke Agent Media YouTube and get up if you like to listen get on the apple and the spotify oh, yeah. uh tail be on next week but dan what do you got coming up on b2l yeah so uh, i'm over here in jersey just spoke at an event and i had the pleasure of having brad lee on between two lock boxes so that episode is going to drop next week i was That's able to have one. ufc legend he's the only person that has ever taken khabib to the uh, last round i believe the fifth round he was on as well because he just got his license and we have some really really big names that are going to be coming up soon that i can't really talk about yet but super excited Danny deals, making deals. Tom, thanks for coming on. Tom, Tom Tool, if you like what Tom Tool had to say in the comments, let us know. Love to hear your thoughts on Susan's comments on dual agency, whether you're with that or against that, and uh, what you think about the mortgage rates. Let us know in the comments, too, if you are a KCM user already. By the way, you can get all of that content and try it out for free with the link below. And if you live in Pound Town or that other erroneous town tom talked about let us Real know town. yeah why don't, why don't you also let us know in the comments who your favorite was if it was tom yeah. drop a tool if it was me drop a ba if it was dan drop a deals yeah. if it was byron drop a b i should drop be, a b an an BL. this is the second one. First one was was me no one's gonna yes. get it everybody loves dan and uh if you want to bounce me off of the walkthrough if you want me to walk out you can let me know in the comments yeah, if you want we'll Byron keep... to make another one of those kissy noises, drop a K in the comments. Yeah, if I should be uh, suspended emoji. for three weeks for that noise, let me know. We'll see you guys next week on the walkthrough.